My name is Brian Hampshire. I am a digital artist. Um, yesterday we got some sad news. Um, Kobe Bryant and his daughter and I want to say seven others got killed um, on a helicopter ride. And, you know, I got the news. I was at work. You know, I, I, I don't know whether it was, it was just me, but... You know, everything was was just real eerie, you know. And you know, I'm driving, I'm driving home, man. It's the quietest, the quietest I have ever heard. Interstate 85 in Atlanta. You know, nobody's blowing horns. Nobody's really cutting anybody off. It, it, it was almost like. The, the city was in a daze uh, you know maybe it was just me but you know it, it, it was like a, a, a dream or something like a nightmare or something I was like wow this, this really happening and you know Kobe you know uh, all star NBA champion um, won an Emmy you know, he was on to his second career, doing great things um, in his second career. Uh, and he just accomplished so much um, in the game and mentoring young NBA players. And so, you know, he accomplished so much, but his, his daughter, you know, that that's that's really what, what hit me uh, when I found out that his daughter was on a helicopter too and got killed um but yeah um you know because she she was just starting her life she, you know, she was 13 years old gg you know 13 years old you know and i was i was just listening to just listening to an interview a kobe interview i want to say about two weeks ago he, he was talking about his daughter and you know how she just loves the game of basketball you know Kobe was coaching her and well, coaching the team he had the team running the triangle offense a bunch of eight graders running a NBA offense the triangle you know and so you would see them at the games courtside she was gonna be something else she was, yeah, she was, she was going to be something else, but you know, it's, it's just tragic and sad, you know, that she had to lose her life too, you know, it, it's, it's just very sad, very sad. So, you know, I wanted to come home and, you know, put something, put something on paper, uh, commemorating Kobe because, you know, uh, you know, I looked up to the guy, you know, I grew up, um, really idolizing this dude. You know, besides Michael Jordan, because I, I think everybody is a Michael Jordan fan. Um, you know, Kobe. You know, I Kobe for the large part had me Lakers fan, and that's partly because of Kobe. You know, I remember um, you know watching the Lakers back in the day uh, when they had Shaq, Nick Van Exel, Eddie Jones. You know, and all the, all of those guys and this kid you know coming into the game and it was like yeah he straight from high school this guy came straight from high school and you saw little spurts of like greatness he's like wow this dude got skills you know and you know he was younger you know that that, that really resonated with the younger me you know he was on a lot of tv shows um, i remember he was on moesha you know just just this guy's like to see now his mentality and his thought process it, it's, it's really amazing um, I was reading this article about him and Allen Iverson so I'm going to read real quick um, it was November 12, 1996 Iverson scored 35 while Kobe just had two points in five minutes Kobe said when he checked into his room later that night and saw the 35, 35 points that Iverson scored on Sports Center, he lost it. He flipped the table, threw the chairs, broke the TV. Um, 
you know, he later explained how Iverson scored 41 points on him in in 1999 in Philadelphia. Um, so that was really the motivation of, of really how he's called like the Black Mamba now. Uh, but he said he obsessively read every article and every book he could find about Allen Iverson. He watched every game, going back to IUPU All American game. Uh, you know, that's that's yeah, that's high school. You know, so he went all the way back to high school to watch Iverson. He said he studied his every success and his every struggle. He obsessively searched for any weakness he could find, right? And so the following February, Iverson went scoreless against Kobe in an entire half, in, in one half of basketball. And and so Kobe said he wasn't satisfied with the win. You know, after he held Iverson uh, scoreless for an entire half, he said, I wasn't satisfied with the win. Kobe said that he was annoyed that he made me feel that way in the first place. What, who thinks that way? Like, who, who thinks that way? He, he was annoyed that Iverson, like Iverson shouldn't even make me feel this way. Like what, what am I doing? I, you know, I should have been working 20 times harder earlier. This should have never happened. And, and so Kobe swore from that point on to approach every matchup as a matter of life and death. No one was gonna have that type of control over my focus ever again. And, you know, essentially, that's the Mamba mentality, domination. You know, plenty of stories. Uh, I was listening to this uh, one podcast, and I think it was it was uh, Jay Williams. Jay Williams, he's a commentator on ESPN now. And, you know, he said he was I, I want to say it was uh, before the game. Yeah, it was It was before the game. It was the night before the game. He said he wanted to go to the gym and just, you know, get some shooting around or whatever. And when he got there, he saw Kobe there, right? And he said Kobe, he, he was just sitting there watching him and waiting on, waiting on him. And he said Kobe, he witnessed Kobe working out for like an hour, just straight working out like it's the game. Like it's the game game, you know, it's not practice. It's the, he's working out like it's the game. And he said he came in and when he came in, he don't know how long Kobe has been there, but it, it, he witnessed him working out for like an hour, may, maybe even longer, but he, he witnessed him working out for like an hour. And when he got there, he, he had, he had, you know, his shirt was, was sweaty. So he know he had been there for a while. And he was just sitting up there thinking like, when, when is he? When is he gonna get tired? Like, he, he has a game tomorrow. I mean, we have a game tomorrow. You know, I'm just gonna shoot around for like 30 minutes, but this dude, you know, this dude is sitting up here working out like it's the game game. And, you know, he, after the game, he said, Jay Williams said, uh, Jay Williams said, uh, after the game, he had put up, I wanna say he had put up 40 on him. <laughs> he put up 40 on him real quick, and he had asked him about, you know the the workout or whatever and you know kobe said yeah i saw you when you came in i, I was i was getting ready to leave kobe said I, I was getting ready to leave i saw you when you walked in but i wanted to send you a message who who does that like you're working out and you know you you probably been there for about like an hour you you got all your shots in but you see your opponent walk in and you want to send him a message. And so he proceeds to go another hour. <laughs> he proceeds to go another hour just to send him a message. He said, I want to send you a message just letting you know it's it's going to be a rough night tomorrow. I don't get tired. I'm relentless. I'm going to oppose my will upon you. And, you know, that. Th these Kobe stories, man. These Kobe stories, you know, we was, we was just, just, um, you know, getting a lot of these sto uh, Kobe stories uh, coming out because, you know, today is the age of the podcast. You know, a lot of, a lot of ex um, NBA players, 
have a lot of podcasts I listen to, and you know, Kobe, you know, he, he guest stars on the show, and you know, he talks about you know his life journey, his his thought process, and, and, and stuff like that, and and the other players they they share their stories, and you know, we was just getting a a, a, a glimpse of you know what it takes, what it really takes to become a, a legend. And I think we should use this unfortunate, very unfortunate situation, learning situation. We should, you know, look at all of the videos, all of the interviews. I even think he has a book out. Um, it's called Mama Mentality. And really study and really look at his mentality because I think um, his life story, his philosophy on a lot of things, I think that we can learn from it and really better ourselves in our um, in our particular field. And also, we can use this to to just really understand that you know tomorrow's not promised. And I know a lot of people say this, and most people would agree with that statement, but. It, it, it takes something tragic like this to to really hammer home tomorrow's not promise. So if if any one of y'all have any type of like dreams, um, any type of things that you know you've been holding, you know, putting in your back pocket, hey, I'm gonna do this. Uh, it's not the right time. Uh, you know, if any one of the listeners, any one of y'all listeners have anything like that you know try your best to do it try your best to go out there and you know try to fulfill your dreams because tomorrow's not promised you know and i think we can i think we can you know take that at least take his life and learn from it you know and i think he would he would want us to do that I know he learned from a lot of different legends throughout different fields, just studying them. And, you know, I think we should we should recognize him as a legend and and do the same thing. You know, once again, you know, rest in peace, Kobe, rest in peace, Gigi, rest in peace, um, the other passengers on that helicopter and uh, prayers go out to uh, Vanessa and you know the the rest of the family too because I you know I know they're I know they're hurt so you know I, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, for what it is you know it's a sad day and um, guess I'll catch you guys on the next video and if you guys like this video please like and subscribe and for the rest of the video we're just gonna have music and we're just gonna just sit back and reflect and enjoy the rest of the video and as always i'll see you guys next time mm -hmm.